Well, good morning, all. I know I was just having a conversation with those of you online, so you know that we're all together in this virtual and physical space, and that is a very good thing. And uh, you will notice I am in the the twilight here, in the dimness, and that's by design because our series that we begin today on the uh, Sunday where we probably should be celebrating Epiphany. I do apologize for rushing the undecorating of the space. Uh, <laughs> I was concerned about getting it decorated for this space and the help we'd have. So uh, we, we don't have the tree and that sort of thing up. But technically we are, what, two days past Epiphany now. So, uh, so we are out of the uh, Christmas season and into ordinary time leading up to Lent. And uh, this time we are looking at the winter blahs, which come from hoping for more light, right? You know, you get up and next thing you know, the sun's going down. It's kind of a winter thing, right? And that can, that can make you feel down and blue. And it can actually, for some people, create actual de uh, depression with seasonal affective disorder. And so we're using that as a theme. And we're going to talk about spiritual affective disorder for the next few weeks leading up to uh, Lent, which will begin in February, the Ash Wednesday. So that is our plan. So it, grateful that you are here with us. And we will uh, gather as we do in our physical gathering here today is held on the traditional territory of the Wabanaki nations. And so we recognize and honor the current nations of the Wabanaki Confederacy, the Maliseet, the Passamaquoddy, the Penobscot, and the Mi'kmaq, who have stewarded this land throughout the generations. We pause in remembrance of those whose lives and land were taken to establish the cities and towns in which we live. And we remember also what it is that causes us to gather in this physical and virtual space, our mission. And so let us begin our service together by reading our mission statement. Continue to walk in the way of Jesus. Many of you have probably heard of seasonal affective disorder. It is a condition in which the lack of sunlight, often during winter months, can affect our moods and ability to cope effectively. Millions of people suffer from some sort of anxiety or depression disorder. If you do not, chances are you are close to someone who does. For the next few weeks, we will talk about a condition called spiritual affective disorder, considering how the uncertainty and pace of life can keep us from spiritual and emotional well-being that God desires for us. But instead of focusing on typical spiritual practices as an antidote, we will simply focus on how everyday life activities could become spiritual practices, deepening our experience of a meaningful life and helping us shine a light on the blahs. This morning, we hear the scripture reminding us to arise, shine, for your light has come. This is your invitation to flip the switch and see waking up each day as a simple reminder that we can start fresh. Do my feet and a light on. 
Waking God, we give you thanks for the chance to start fresh every day. Open our eyes to the light of possibilities, even when the day ahead holds difficulties. Be with us, near us, beside us. Amen. to my feet and a light unto my Feeling afraid, feeling uncertain, feeling down and depressed is no sin, my friends. It doesn't mean you are separated from God. May we lean on those who are right there and ready to be a cradle of God's love for each of us. And so let us wish for one another the peace of Christ. May the peace of Christ be with you all. from your
Well, hello. It is good to see you wherever you are. I can see you through that lens. We are gathering here today to spend a little time together and talk about light. We just heard a song, More Light. We could use some more light, couldn't we? Especially this time of year, the days are getting a little longer, the nights a little shorter, we're getting more light. And today we're going to spend some time talking about flipping the switch. That's how we get more light, isn't it? Are you ready to flip the switch? Right here, this light, our time with children light, is ready to be turned on. Will you do it with me? Ta-da! More light. Maybe you have a lamp you could switch on near you where you are and bring more light so that you might be more bright. What? You think I'm saying that you should be smarter? Well, it wouldn't hurt to be smarter, would it? But that's not what we're talking about today with being bright. We're talking about being bright in ways that are emotional, the way you feel. Do you have feelings that you might describe as bright? Do you have some feelings that you might describe as feeling dark or dim? You know, sadness, which we might think of as dark, and happiness, which we might think of as light, are both emotions that you are created with. God made you this way. You have both feelings. You have many more than that too, but all of them are okay. As a matter of fact, being a bit dim and dark, being sad, is not bad. It, in fact, is a way that you might let others know that you need a hug, that you need a kind word, maybe that you just need some time alone, you need some cheering up, whatever it means. For you, it's not bad. In fact, it might be a sign, a sign that more light is needed and God can provide that light sometimes right through your parents, your friends, or even just being alone. Now this week, we're going to remember what the scripture encourages us to arise and shine and give God our glory, glory. Do you know that song? Maybe you could sing it. And maybe it's not a bad idea to set up a practice for this week. Try it just this week. If you like it, maybe you could keep doing it. But find a place where maybe you could even write a note that tells you, arise, shine, give God your glory. And put it near, perhaps, a switch, near a light that you turn on every morning. Maybe put it near your toothbrush or somewhere that you go every morning, maybe your, your breakfast table, to remind you that every day is another day to seek God's light and to arise and shine. Every week, we're going to end our time together with this Say After Me poem. That means I'll say a line and you repeat it after me. You can do that, right? Let's try. There is a lamp inside of me. It's always there for all to see. But there are times the light feels dim and things are tough and just too grim. But that's okay. When I feel down, I know in time it turns around. I'm not alone when I am sad. I'm always loved. For that, I'm glad. And I'm glad we had this time together. And I'm glad that I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. Hear what needs to be heard.
tell us if I say the word okay. correctly. <laughs> Arise. Shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Sovereign One has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But Yahweh will arise upon you, and God's glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and rulers to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your descendants shall come from far away, and your children shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your hearts shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Epoth. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense, and shall proclaim the praise of our God. So ends our reading, and this was from Isaiah, chapter 60, verses 1 through 6. Well, good, you picked up on the fact that much of this is a sing-along. If the, if the words and music are on the screen, feel free to sing along. Um, though, those songs that you heard, and during our prayer, there will be a, another song introduced. will be repeated each week. So if you don't know it now, you'll be sick of it before the series is over. But uh, there you have it. So we are talking about sad seasonal affective disorder, the uh, winter blahs, only in the clinical, technical way. Because the lack of sunlight is something physical that affects all of us, and some of us in real ways that they need treatment for. And maybe that applies to some of you. Maybe you feel it. But we all do feel it to a certain extent, and that's why we're building on that idea of calling it spiritual affective disorder. What does it mean if you go through a prolonged period of stress or a prolonged period of uncertainty or some kind of struggle? What happens to your spirit, to your attitude, to your emotions when that happens? We take on a lesser sort of position, don't we? We feel down, perhaps depressed, if not clinically, certainly in an emotional way. You see, all of us have mental health. That's something that's easy to forget. We use the term like it's only ever something bad. Oh, you have a mental health problem. Well, you can have positive, good mental health too, right? I mean, all of us have varying degrees of healthiness to our mental state. And yes, some among us struggle with chemical, dis chemical imbalances and disorders, uh, traumas, stresses that impact us in ways that require treatment. And I don't want to minimize that at all in this process. If anything, I want to lift it up that it should not be embarrassing. There should be no stigma attached to getting treatment for mental health issues. I mean, when was the last time someone was stigmatized for dealing with their diabetes? 
for their high blood pressure. You take medication for it, right? If it's diagnosable, you treat it. And mental health is no different. It's just a different part of our being that becomes ill and needs treatment. And just like all of us may not need, you know, intervention for our cholesterol, other than changing our diets, <laughs> there are degrees of, of these diseases, and we all do suffer from some spiritual affective disorder from time to time. And that's why we're looking at this. Now, I, I do want to mention that if you are struggling, I mean, really struggling, thinking about harming yourself, if you're struggling with not feeling like you can even get out of bed, there is help. And I want to make sure you get it just so that that's there. And we have that wonderful new service that is helpful, 988. It's like calling 911 if you have an emergency that you need first responders for. You can find help at the other end of the phone with a call or a text to 988. And maybe, maybe it's not you who needs the help, or maybe it's someone you know does. So it's good to keep that in mind and remember that important piece. Now, whether it is clinical depression or just simple blahs, none of us can simply flip the switch and fix it, right? We have artificial light, but that doesn't do it, does it? If you're dealing with spiritual, or I'm sorry, seasonal affective disorder, the, the unnatural light, the artificial light doesn't give you your body what it needs. There isn't a way of simply flipping the switch and fixing things. But regardless of what it is you're struggling with, you can flip the switch of your intention, of your attitude, right? You can decide to get help. People in recovery understand that. It is a disease, but you're responsible for seeking treatment, right? You have to abstain from the substance that's, that's creating the problem in your life, and you have to make that intention every day, right? Day by day, you, you make that choice, and you get the help you need by putting yourself in a place to get the help. I know in 12-step programs in AA, they, they say, you know, if you stay in the barbershop long enough, you get a haircut, right? So don't go sit at the bar if you have a problem with drinking, right? It makes sense. All of us need to put ourselves in the place where we can find the most health, where we can find healthy situations. And that is a choice. Even if we don't choose, even if we can't choose what happens to us, we can choose how we respond to it. Now, the scripture today says, arise, shine. I'm sure many of you go, yeah, right. <laughs> Especially this time of year, maybe any time of year. Getting up in the morning is not everybody's favorite pastime, right? <laughs> well, maybe there's some morning people around here, right? You know, you, maybe you do like getting up in the morning. But I think it's interesting that we are commanded to arise and shine for our light has come. And arising... Maybe we don't have a choice about we got to muster the energy to do that. Shining, maybe not so much, right? Maybe we don't feel so bright and shiny and happy every morning or every moment of every day. So what are we to do with this command from Scripture? Well, we can choose to seek light to shine, right? You can reflect light even if you don't have light coming from you. And you can choose to seek it out. And I like the fact that this passage says, Arise, shine, for your light has come. Your light. Now, I know that it's speaking to the whole people. It's speaking about the coming of the Messiah. That's why we're looking at it at this time of year. It's about understanding that, that God is shining light on the people, all the people, your light. It becomes your light. But what if we look at it in terms of your particular light? Because we don't all respond to light in the same way, or at least in the animal kingdom, we don't. There are different types of animals, right? There are some that are active at night, and we call them nocturnal, right? And then there are some that are active only in the daytime. Those are called, it's like the biology say, anybody know what that word is? Diurnal. Diurnal. Good. And then there are the, 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 the animals that are active 
only in the twilight, either at dusk or at dawn. Some are just dusk, some are just dawn. Some are, are particular to the very amount of light. If you've ever gone listening for woodcocks, and I'm sure you all do because you're all avid birders like I am, right? Anyway, you would know that there is a very particular amount of candlelight. Is that how you measure light, right? I mean, that candle power, candle power, I guess is the word, right? There's a very particular threshold at which they start to sing and display. And then when it gets a little too dark, they stop. There's a little window, and it's very, scientists will tell you exactly what the numbers are. In reality, you just go out and you, you hope for it, right? And there are animals like that that are active at dusk and dawn, and they're called, anybody? It's one of my favorite words, crepuscular. Isn't that a cool word? That's, that's, that's your takeaway. If you take away nothing else from today, you can go use the word crepuscular with people, and they'll just look at you funny, and you say, well, I learned it in church, you know, so blame me for it. And then, then there's a word for animals that are active in day and night. Because if you think about like a raccoon, you think about them sort of nocturnal, right? But they're active in the daytime too. And there are a lot of animals like that that will exploit whatever they can. And there's a word for that called cathemeral. Cathemeral. So there you go. Point being that each of us have our spiritual niches just like the animals have their niche in the daytime. We all find things, certain things easier than others. Certain practices resonate with us and others don't. You know, maybe walking a labyrinth is, is your thing. And maybe it's like, when can I get out of this stupid thing, right? Maybe daily prayer works for you and maybe just praying all the time is the way to go. I know for me, sitting still and trying to pray is a difficult thing. I almost always have to get up and move. But when I'm moving and I'm giving my monkey mind something to do, you know, remember to take steps and pay attention to where I'm going, that opens me up to the spirit if I'm intentional about it. And that's all I'm saying is be intentional. Find your niche. How is it that light impacts you? How is it that spirit comes to you? Because just like in the natural world, the sun is really always shining. I mean, at night, it's just on the other side of the globe right? It's still shining, and we see it reflected in the moon. We know that there is always some light. Even during the eclipse, we see the light of the stars. We know that there is light surrounding us, even if it's minimal. So the question is, how are you going to find it? Thinking of light as spirit, because we also trust that God's spirit is always surrounding us, always lifting us up, always loving us, and wanting to shine forth from within us. So what practices work for you? Now, religious rituals are not the only way to find spirit. I am grateful that many of you take the time to come here on a Sunday or tune in through Zoom or watch it later on a recording. That is good. But think about the fact that you can watch it later, that you can do it when it's convenient for you. That's one of the takeaways, one of the gifts of that terrible time of pandemic that we're trying to get through is that we've learned that you can participate in a way that makes sense for you at home, in the evening after you tuck the kids in <laughs> so they're not running around, whatever works, and that's okay. What if instead of seeing only official religious practice, officiated by somebody who's been to school and been ordained and gets to wear the, the stole and things like that. What if you just understood that anything with the right intention, any common practice can be a spiritual practice? What if we respond this week, and we're going to do this each week, respond by looking at an idea of something that is a practice that we might normally do that we can make a spiritual practice for us to open ourselves to spirit. So what if this week you open yourself up to God when you arise? Set your intention to allow the spirit in and around you every day when you wake up. I tend to find that for myself, that space, that kind of liminal space between being fully asleep and fully awake when I get up in the morning, before my mind is cluttered with all the to-dos of the day or whatever stimulus might come my way. In those moments, if I awake and make it my intention to say, God, what is it that you have to say to me? I'm listening. That's the best time for me. Now, your mileage may vary. 
But this week, the practice is to arise and shine. So you will find when we uh, get at past the announcements, there's a place where I'm going to explain the practice for the week. It's really just this. Each week, there'll be a different practice. And we have little cards to help you. If you're physically here, you can pick one up. We left them on the table. And there's a packet of eight. I know there's seven weeks, but it was four to a page, you know, so I didn't want to waste space. So, so there's an extra uh, in there that, that we'll come to later in the series. But there's, there's a way of, of taking that card. And this week, the idea is take that card and put it somewhere where you'll see it first thing in the morning. Maybe you stick it on the mirror in the bathroom. Right? Maybe you stick it where you make your coffee or you just put it next to your bed. So you wake up and you see it and there will be a prayer on it. Each week there'll be a prayer and there'll be an intention to do something. And so maybe this week you can try that and find a spiritual practice in your common everyday living that helps you shine a light on the spiritual blahs that can come after the letdown of the excitement of Christmas and the dreariness of a long cold winter. So know that you can shine. It is possible because the light of the world has come. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. And not only does it light your way, it shines around us, it shines among us and it shines among you, in and around you, and most importantly, from you. Amen. Open unto me, light for my darkness, light for my darkness, open unto me, open unto me, light for my darkness, open unto me, O oh God. Rising. We live in varying degrees of sun and shadow. We struggle at times to believe in the dawn of goodness in this world. We find it difficult to understand the complexities of our existence, how to hold both joy and sorrow, love and disappointment, the infirmities of our minds and spirits seem at times more daunting than our bodily aches. Help us to know there are solutions, to trust that we can feel better, even in the most difficult of times. May we know with each rising of the sun that you are lifting us, holding us, present with us. And so we pray today for those who are suffering in mind, body, and spirit, and lift up our joys as well to our God. This week, we will begin with those who are in the room. So if you have a joy or concern to share, we will pray with you. Just raise your hand and the mic will be brought to you.
Yes. Thelma Swanson Curtis is blind in both eyes, and she's going to be 100 today. She was moved from Park Residence to the next building, Woodlands, because she couldn't care for herself. And it is a joy that I bring to you today. This is, this is our prayer. Prayers for Bethany's partner, Denise, and her family on the passing of her stepfather, Vern, especially her mother, Anne, who has been having health problems. So please share your thoughts and prayers with them. This is our prayer. Is there anyone online who would like to share a prayer request? Um, continuing prayers for the hungry and the homeless. This is our prayer. Prayer of gratitude for a successful surgery. This is our prayer. Kathy posted in the chat that asking for prayers for complete healing of serious post-op infection for her surgical site. This is our prayer. We remember David Dean, our musician, who was away from us last week because his mother was so ill and near death. She died this past week, and that's why he's not with us today. And so we lift up our prayers for him and his family. Our prayer. Nancy asks for prayers for her sister, Noella, who is continuing with her chemo. And now let us pray together that prayer which our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Open unto me, light for my darkness, light for my darkness, open unto me, open unto me, light for my darkness, open unto me. Regardless of how 
down we might feel, we know that we are not alone and that God is present with us. And for that, we can be glad. For that, we can offer our thanks and offer our gifts. And so I encourage you to continue in your generosity, in your giving. If you have financial gifts you're able to give, you may use the online portal that you can find by using that QR code on the screen. You can go to our website and do that. You can schedule recurring gifts. And of course, if you're physically in the room, there is the plate that you can put your gift in on the way out. But even more important than that is also giving of yourself in other ways, of your time and your talent. And so we remember all of creation and the part that we are in it and how we are to be stewards of it. And so we pause, as is our practice, for a moment for uh, concern about creation care. We just had a couple of readings. One is a poem and one's a reading this morning just to share with you since we were talking about seasonal affective disorder and kind of how nature can help you overcome that a bit. Come home to the forest where time goes slow and the breath is mellow, where thoughts find rest and calm comes to nest. Come home to the woods to be friends with trees and listen to the breeze, to wander through trails and mend your sails. Come home to nature when your heart is hurting or your soul needs healing. When something feels wrong or you just need a place to belong, the forest awaits. Come home, be healed. And that one was written by Badushi Pukan. And the next reading is from Jan Richardson, who some of you may know, but it's called um, Every Given Light, and it was written for Epiphany. There are days we think only so much is given, a glint, a gleam, a light so small we could carry it in the palm of our hand, just enough to let us see the next step, perhaps, into the mystery. There are days grace comes, but in shadow days it gathers itself into the corners. Days it seems to turn its gaze sidelong, as if distracted, or pondering, or paused. Let it be said, this is not that day. This is the day when grace gives out its radiance, declaring itself to everything in sight. This is the day when every given light bears forth like a star, turning its face towards us with the brilliance that was there all along, that it had saved just for us, just for the joy of seeing us shine. Amen. Why is that like that? Oh, <laughs> okay, that was different. Uh, a couple of uh, announcements, don't have slides this week, so you'll just have to remember, <laughs> just audit auditory memory today. Uh, we will pick up our, our fellowship on Thursday nights on Zoom again, and we will be reflecting on this series. Uh, Maybe it'll be how the practice is going for you this week. There are some prompt questions on the topic and we'll have some general conversation. It's also my hope to have uh, guided meditations, assuming I could find that so we can start with a centering time with the uh, guided meditation, similar to what the threshold moments were in the last series, because I know there was some uh, enthusiasm for that. And I think it's a great way to find our time together, but that will be on Zoom on this same uh, zoom room on thursday nights at seven has been our regular practice also there is a journal for personal reflection that accompanies this if you get our uh, weekly e-newsletter margin notes and if you don't why why don't you uh, you should sign up for that if you get that you'll see that the link is in there and if you want a printed copy don't have your own printer aren't quite sure how to navigate the technology just say so and we'll print you one and make sure you get one it is uh just an accompaniment to to this series if you uh, use it for journaling maybe you would journal it and then uh, share some reflections on thursday evenings or not it's a uh, a complete option, but it's available. So wanted to mention that. 
We are having a council meeting following worship today. So if you're on the council or interested in what the council is up to, stick around. And uh, it will be in this room so we can do it on Zoom. So we'll have to gather. We have to figure it out so we're on camera. If you're too much under it, you don't show up. So we'll have to kind of circle around back there. We'll figure it out, but uh, stick around for that following uh, the service today. Uh, we will be at that meeting setting the date for the annual meeting. Uh, and the suggestion for that date is February, Herb, help me, 5th? Is that something? 12th? 12th. February 12th is the suggested date. So uh, bring the chocolates for your Valentine and the flowers. And yeah. So, uh, so anyway, that's uh, uh, coming up. But that also means that if you are responsible for a report, and some of you are, you should be thinking about that now. <laughs> be this, yes, because, because Nancy wants them by the 27th. And this is the 8th. So do the math. You don't have a lot of time. Uh, it probably won't take you a lot of time, but please don't wait till the 26th. <laughs> Definitely don't wait till the 28th. So if you could get it done soon, that would be that would be wonderful. Uh, the only other thing I want to mention is that our uh, partners in ministry, St. Mark's Episcopal Church, has called a new priest. Uh, her name is Gwen Fry. Is that right? Yes. And her installation is this afternoon at four o'clock at St. Mark's. So hopefully some of us can represent our congregation there at that service and celebrate with them and get to know their new leader. Are there other announcements? Anything else to bring up now? Yes, Margo. Yeah. If you could get a microphone, that'd help. Thanks. I want to mention that next week is coffee hour week, and so far nobody has signed up. I have uh, uh, Bill Lee very nicely offered to make the coffee. If somebody would also bring a snack or and help set up, it would be great. I will not be here next week or for the next two coffee hours. So actually, it's a joy. Next week, I'm going to be attending the baptism of my great grandson oh, in wonderful. Rhode Island. Okay, so. That's all. Thank you. I, I'm sure that not everyone has eaten every last Christmas cookie, right? Not, there's still, are there still some Christmas cookies at your house? Yeah. So maybe we could share some of those, right? It was, you know, maybe. Just a thought. Uh, or eat them all up this week and make something fresh as an excuse. I, what, your mileage may vary. Do what, do what you want. Well, thank you. Any other announcements? Well, let me point out our, our practice, spiritual practice for this week. Arise, shine, your light has come. That you will find on these cards, and you will also find it posted later uh, today. I hope I'll put it, I just have to remember, post it on social media, be on our Facebook page, so you can see it that way as well. Um, but it's, uh, it, it's this uh, prayer that you might have, and then the this next slide is the suggestion for practices and uh, if you're here these cards are uh, they're on the table out front still Jackie is that where the piles of cards are? and as I said there's a it's a pack of eight even though we're doing seven weeks the uh, the one that is is the bonus one is the one about movement so you'll figure that out when we get there so that'll be your extra one that you can do whenever you want but we won't have a week to focus on that so if you uh, if you're interested in making a spiritual practice out of a common practice, that's our assignment, our homework, as it were. You didn't realize you're coming to church and getting homework, right? But that's your homework for the week. Uh, well, then let us sing our closing hymn.
So friends, go forth and shine. You have arisen and the light has arisen upon you and find the light that most speaks to you, that you reflect the best, that shines forth most fully from you. And do this to give glory to our God. Give glory to our God, the creator. May this creator God who knows even the sparrow that falls lift you on gentle breezes that you might soar with eagles and bless you with the gift of insight and wisdom. And give glory to the Christ who comes to you still in the form of the least, the last, and the lost. May the Christ bless you with tears to shed with all those who suffer. And give glory to the Holy Spirit, God's wild, untamed spirit, wild as any wild goose. May the Spirit of our God lead you on that wild goose chase into those places where you may not go on your own without that incentive. And may the Spirit bless you with a touch of foolishness to be on the journey and to arise and to shine. And may the love of God be with you all and all those whom you love and all those whom none but God loves now and until that day of God's judgment, when justice will roll down like waters and peace will blossom among all the peoples. Amen. <laughs>